And welcome back, folks, to yet another exciting episode of Call of Pripyat. Complete edition on Master Difficulty. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Well, luckily we are completely safe in here, I suppose. Yep, any mission is about to occur. And where are we? Well, we are in the Iron Forest, which is where we are supposed to go to find the documents about item 62. Yeah. I guess we could go down immediately, but come on, let's let's have a little look at the sky. I mean, the little bit of it that we can actually see. Yeah. Yeah, we're kind of missing out, aren't we? But this is a boundary that I cannot cross because beyond this boundary is death. Whoa. Also, Here comes the emission. Oh. I suppose with the uh, marked by the zone achievement I might actually survive out there, but I don't want to risk it. Just let me have a look. Whoa. Bright orange. Right, if you're curious, this is actually... Whoa. This is actually the place where we got our first Desert Eagle in the stash in the neighboring room there. Hmm. Oh well. I, I still like the effects, even though we get to see very little of it right here. Come on, tell me it's over. I wanna see. I wanna go outside and see the sky. Well? Hello? Guess we're pretty much done. Not quite. Yeah, okay, we're done. Whoa, look at that sky. That looks really... Surreal, actually. Those clouds look kind of like they don't belong there. And now it's raining. And that must be what's left of the emission. Although I'm kind of surprised where it's coming from. I mean, if. Yeah, oh, whoa, whoa. Some kind of aurora. Look at that. Beautiful. If that's where the emission came from, why is that? That's north of here. And if we look on the map, the. Chernobyl power plant is more to the, uh, where is it? Well, Pripyat is here. So I would assume that... don't quite know, but I'm thinking that the power plant would be to our southeast or something. Not to our north. Well, in any case, I guess it's about time we uh, actually get investigating. Right. You may remember Carden gave us his key card, so hopefully we can open this door. Looks like we can. I have a couple of contacts, which probably means well I mean they're not they're probably not any uh friendly people in here. Not any uh stalkers or freedom or duty or anything like that. Not even bandits I would assume. So I have to guess these are probably zombies. Yep, there's one. Right, let's try out our new sniping gun. Uh, well, it's a good shot. I mean, when I hit, actually. And it's silenced. They don't even seem to notice me shooting at them. Still, I kind of... Mess up. Okay, the acquisition system. There we go. Red targets. I do like this feature, but very few guns actually have that. Was that all? Really? I don't have any more contacts, so I guess that is all, but. Huh. Kind of anticlimactic, if I'm honest. Ooh. Valet detector. Not that I need them, but uh, I guess they're worth a bit of money. 
I would assume. Right. Yeah, it's surprisingly peaceful now. <laughs> also, I feel very secure thanks to our new exoskeleton, so, yeah. And once we're done here, we can, I think, pretty safely return to Pripyat and uh, do what we need to do there. Hercules, some more drugs, that's always nice to have. Why don't we take the Zig? It could be worth some money if we have it repaired for free. And there we go. Okay. Be a bit too bright if I turn on the light as well as the night vision device. But the night vision alone isn't that great, to be honest. There we go, that's better. Kind of blinds me, although there doesn't seem to be much more stuff here anyway. Some sort of sciencey thing location with indefinable scientific tools and instruments and whatnot. Also, locked door. So, we've been kind of railroaded here. But that's okay. It's actually something I notice with a lot of Call of Pripyat. It's not too bad, it's not anywhere near to many other modern shooters. But it is more railroading than I think in the first game, certainly. Oh well. It's okay, it's only for the main mission stuff, and even though I think, well, this is a main mission. So, oh. Something is shaking the ground. Probably not a good thing. Oh! Uh-oh! That's what's called a mess-up. That is a pseudo-giant, if you don't remember those from earlier. However, we can get up here. See that? Now it's completely waste. You know, it's, it's complete waste at this point. It's useless. Yeah, this completely takes the threat out of this creature. We can now just follow it. Jump when it's uh, doing that, so it doesn't hurt you with the uh, shockwave, I suppose. Also, it seems to be radioactive. That's kind of cool. Right. Anyway, this would take a while with uh, with our pistol, so why don't we use this thing instead? Hey, I don't even get hurt when I don't jump. I guess this only applies if you're on the same level as it. As usual, try to hit it in the face, if it turns its face to you. This one doesn't seem to want to, though. Who can blame it? Yeah, I'm not taking any any damage whatsoever. Yeah, this is kind of pathetic actually, but it's okay. We have to use any advantage we can get. Because uh, this creature has a ton of health anyway, and it can actually kill you very easily, even if you have the exoskeleton on. So, I'd rather do this than uh, go down there. I'm not sure why they put this card here. I mean, are we supposed to do that? If so, then they uh, kind of deliberately defuse their own mini boss fight. What's that? Interesting. Holes in the metal thing. Okay. I think I have a, an inkling. It's hurt now because it's like, yeah, pulling itself like that. And now it's dead. Yeah, that, that really wasn't too hard. <laughs> I have to be honest with you. That was actually kind of pathetic. I want to look at its face, please. There we go. Yeah, not the prettiest of creatures. But it too looks 
kind of humanoid. I mean, well, maybe more ape-like. Look at that nose. Yeah, maybe more like a gorilla. Perhaps, although its feet are not gorilla-like. They are more humanoid. It's kind of bizarre anyway, because it has like four arms. As you can see, that it has these two small ones and the two main ones that it, that it uses to move. And then these useless feet that it just drags behind itself. It's a messed up creature. Nobody's questioning that. It's, I think, the toughest one in terms of pure hit points, but actually not the worst creature to face. I think uh, Burus or Burus are probably the ones that I would class as the most difficult ones. Uh, because while these are very, well, very much a bullet sponge, you know, can soak up a ton of damage, uh, they don't really have that much offensive capability. What's that? That looks like a stash over there. Huh. Maybe we should get that before we continue. Yeah, this seems to be the way. Yeah, so uh, I guess you can decide for yourself which creatures you find the hardest to face. I guess chimeras are also in the top three of the worst creatures. Chimeras and Buras, I would say. Pseudogiants are very tough, but not the... Uh, most powerful. I mean, they have the most health and they can kill you very quickly, but they're also slow and, well, easily tricked like we did there. They cannot climb up objects or and they cannot hurt you if you are above them, not really. Whereas a Bureau will simply uh, kill you with its telepathic force. And a Chimera could probably just jump up on that wagon and uh, kill you that way. Anyway, this is where we go. And I guess, oh, here we go. And I guess something like the controller is actually a weaker version of the Bura in a lot of ways. And it, it's disorienting, don't get me wrong, uh, when a controller hits you. But if you can get close enough to wail on it with a shotgun, it'll go on very, uh, it'll go down very quickly, which is something that isn't true for Buras. I, I'm not sure how to pronounce that, which is why I'm kind of switching back and forth between Bura and Bura. It's kind of unclear. I mean, is it like the U in a fuse or in a different word? It isn't really helped by the fact... Oh, this is wrong. It isn't really helped by the fact that uh, most of the conversations in this game are silent. So while we read about Buras from Trapper, we don't really learn too much in terms of how it's pronounced. Also, this is a giant gauze rifle. This is more like a gauze turret. And yes, that is aimed at the uh, metal plating that was next to our fight with the uh, pseudogiant. So basically this is their shooting range, right? They shot at that metal plate there. And it left some nice holes in it. And this is what we need. Uh, these must be the schematics. The documents refer to a central laboratory designated X-8, which could contain information about secret experiments conducted in the zone. Our analysts have been interested in this issue for quite some time. And there we go. We got information about more secret experiments, but we also got the info that Carden needs, I believe. And you know, that's actually kind of interesting, isn't it? It sounds like uh, a case of various uh, official institutions and organizations uh, doing things without each other's knowledge. Because, well, Dektarev is part of the USS and is associated with the military. But... Uh, his folks want to know about these experiments and those experiments weren't done by private people they were done well by some sort of governmental organization that is hidden or I guess semi-legal yeah, some kind of gray area perhaps anyway uh, I guess that means we have something new to investigate 
Now that is actually a case for Pripyat itself. Also, we have new poltergeist in the area, apparently. I'm not gonna do the uh, stand still and shoot it trick. I'm just gonna get the hell out of here. Alright. Okay, let's quickly check. Uh, anything else I need to do here in Saturn while we're here? Charges, ghost rifle. Mm, only waiting for the delivery with Nimb, really. We checked all the anomalies last time. I suppose artifacts could have respawned in the uh, latest. In the latest of the, uh, you know, emissions could have happened, but uh, let's not go through all of that again, shall we? We have plenty of good artifacts right now. And I'm sure we'll investigate Jupiter eventually. Again, too. And maybe we can find some artifacts there, then. Uh, lots of zombies around. I think I explained about that in a very early episode, actually. But uh, let me reiterate it anyway. Uh, when you install the complete mod, you get to choose what happens with stalkers. Random... Generic stalkers, bandits, duty folk, freedom, who are left outside when an emission hits. As in, they do try. They do try to get into cover and all that. But if they fail, well, what happens to them then? Uh, one thing is that they can simply die. Another thing is that their corpses. Whoa. I think we should get away. Yeah. We could fight them all, but is there really any point to it? One thing is that they uh, can simply die, leaving their corpses behind for you to loot. Another thing is that they could simply explode, so they do die, but uh, there are no corpses left. Or, and that's the option I chose because I like zombies, <laughs> uh, they turn into zombified stalkers. So that's why uh, we encounter so many zombies around here, I think. And especially after an emission hits. Because all the poor little stalkers who didn't find cover in time, yeah, they are now zombified. It's kind of an interesting notion. You constantly live in a state of threat of zombification, basically. And it's not like a virus. You don't get bitten or anything. You're basically being overwhelmed by the weather. <laughs> it makes the... Uh, die please it makes the zone a really hostile place I think it it has I, I like it. it it's an interesting notion I feel and I think it's great that the the modders gave us this option right well back to the story at hand actually dogs let's talk to Carden now because uh, he needs those documents Am I going too far? Uh, I'm kind of disoriented. Oh, here we go. Yeah. And the Skadovskis is, of course, always a rather loud place when uh, zombies are around. But these people seem calm enough, despite all that. Right, let's talk to Carden. Here you go. Yeah, you can have those schematics. Here's your card back first. Yeah, it's a memory thing. Okay, here are the schematics. Huh. Yeah, apparently they tried to wipe the data and destroy it, but uh, not all of it. Uh, but since this was actually in the uh, original lab and not part of some monolith scheme. I have to assume that uh, even after Cardinal left the lab, the weapons lab, they kept working on it or something. Or maybe it just doesn't remember all of the intricacies of the schematics. That might be it too. Okay, now we lost the weapon, but he'll try to fix it up for us. We can come back and get it, I suppose. In a sense, it's a... It's, uh, Superior sniper rifle, but very very hard to come by armor uh, not armor ammunition for it Obviously, so. so these batteries are one of I think two 
ways to acquire ammunition for it. That we can find here and there. Mostly in stashes, really. Right. Hmm. You know, it's it's kind of silly, but I think we need to waste some time right now, because otherwise we're not going to get the Gauss Rifle back, and we are also still waiting for Nimble's delivery anyway, so why don't we do that? You have that valet detector. Right. Uh, so I'm going to store some stuff. Right. Well, actually, I'm not... On the contrary, I'm gonna pick up some stuff. Stuff that we may want to bring to Pripyat to have it repaired for free. And also store it there in case we need it. Don't really want to see the suit anymore. Hmm. We'll take the helmet so that I can show off the infrared scanner once we are in, uh, in Jupiter. And I guess I can take these cans and the antibiotics. I guess we can leave one antibiotic here just in case. Yeah. And these are mostly guns that I don't really want. I mean, yeah, we have a custom Desert Eagle, but it's not really that great. I don't think. Booze, huh? Hmm. That will become irrelevant soon. Right. Lots of medical supplies. I guess we can take a couple of them with us. In fact, why don't we try to get as much of that stuff to Pripyat as possible. We can fill it up to 100 and then we can still run quickly. Ah, that's a lot. They keep shooting out there. What are they even shooting at? End these zombies or don't, but come to a conclusion, please. That's a lot of bandages. Guess I can bring some silences too. Never know when you might need them. And ammo for our little gun here. <sighs> okay, sure, that's enough. Right, so let's have a little nap and uh, see how long it takes for carbon to fix the gun. Hmm. Hey there. Well, let's have a little breakfast first. They're still shooting! How could... How did I even have any sleep there, huh? Well... They stuck an electrostatic artifact into the battery. Huh. Anomalous shit. So without the zone, they couldn't even get this gun to work in the first place. Oh, you're done with the rifle then? Piece of cake. Power supply is clear as day. If it starts acting up, just bring it back here for a tune-up. Cool. I need batteries though, and yeah, here, we'll buy some, why not, but those are homemade, they're actually worse than the ones that we can find in stashes, but it's one of the few ways that you can get uh, more ammo if you run out. Right, also the ghost rifle cannot be upgraded, I don't think by anybody, really. Speaking of upgrades, we still need to visit Novikov for our final suit upgrade anyway. Alright. And what about Nimble? No, he's still away. Let's have another short nap. I don't want to... Oh. And he suddenly appeared. Cool. So I guess he is gone while he tries to collect your... That's your order complete. Yeah. Collect your goods. Yeah. And then he teleports in when he has it here. Okay, let's buy it. The Lynx. Deceased now. Huh. Sure, I'll buy that. And I also want to buy the armored suit now. Uh, 
Now I've changed my mind. I guess I don't have enough money anymore now that we bought the rifle. Yeah, I'm actually pretty poor right now. Anyway, this is a unique Dragunov. And I'm overburdened. Wow, did not expect that to happen. There we go. Let's have uh, our friend Carden take a look at it at least. I want to know what we can upgrade for this gun. There we go. Aha! Target acquisition system. Very nice, very nice things indeed. Well, we might want to upgrade that later. I think I'm actually gonna leave that here. Because I don't have the money to upgrade all of that anyway. But we could at least sell some of the crap we have on us. Well, we'll do that in the next episode, yeah. Let us head to uh, Jupiter and see what we can do there. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. So in fact, I think we'll end this episode here and we'll resume once we've arrived in Jupiter in the next one. See you then, folks. Bye.